Boy, oh boy, don't you just love Twitter? Isn't it fantastic? Isn't social media great? Now I'm the world's biggest faggot because I said I hated social media, and yet here I am, two years later still on this godforsaken fucking website, using it daily. I don't know why. I'm like an opium whore. I can't put the fucking pipe down. Yet I'm noticing a few strange things, so I just wanted to share a little theory I had. Now, maybe you're familiar with Reddit. Maybe you even use it, and if you do, throw yourself off a fucking bridge because that's where you deserve to be at the bottom of a goddamn ravine. On Reddit, they have a way of dealing with problematic posters. It's called shadow banning. If you haven't heard of shadow banning, chances are you've probably been shadow banned, and nobody's been able to tell you, because that's how it works. It's just you alone in the wilderness, screaming at the top of your lungs, and nobody can hear you. They don't see the shit you talk about, they don't see the stuff that you're interested in. You disappear, you're unpersoned. Now I want to talk about what Twitter does. Twitter will outright ban people. I'm sure you're familiar with this gentleman. And yes, I'm intentionally using that picture to dispel the myth that gay men have good fashion sense. They obviously don't. What the fuck were you thinking, Milo? It looks like you skinned the cookie monster before you went to this speech. What, were you stuck in a 1970s internment camp? The only way to get past the guards was to use the grass-colored shag carpeting as full body camo before you hopped over the fence to dodge a bullet? You see, Milo did the unthinkable thing. He decided to go tell an untalented actress that she was not talented. I know, it's insane that he would do that. The crazy madman actually did it. He went over to Harambe's page and he said, Hey, listen, Megilla Gorilla, you can't act for shit. Eat this banana and fuck off. I'm not saying that's what he said. I'm just quoting BuzzFeed because BuzzFeed is an accurate source of news. And they told me that he hates black people. Well, as you can imagine, after Milo was out the door, it was time to clean house a little bit in what I like to call the shit poster holocaust that's currently still underway. Now, some people say this has to do with being conservative. Other people say it has to do with being a fucking asshole. Maybe those go hand in hand. I don't know. I'm not a fucking psychologist. All I know is that a massive amount of people have been purged. But it goes much farther than simply just outright banning. Because if you just outright ban everybody, you're going to anger the majority of the user base. Eventually, it's going to freak people out. So Twitter likes to employ what I like to call throttling. So Twitter devised a really devious way of fucking you without you knowing that you're being fucked. Which is ingenious, I'll admit. It's cuntish, but it's ingenious. Rather than outright ban you, rather than shadow ban you, they throttle you. Twitter has a lot of analytical data and tools at its disposal. You can see part of this by going to your own analytics page. It'll show you all sorts of crazy, nonsensical shit. The credit cards people use, the political party they're affiliated with. Do they like to buy milk or soap? I'm not making that shit up for some reason, and somehow they have that fucking information. Welcome to the modern age. Now, I'd be willing to bet money that a company that can garner that kind of information has a fuck ton more analytics behind it. A lot more data than they're letting the user base actually see. The back end. The end that only the affiliates of Twitter and the employees of Twitter ever get to really look at. And with that kind of data, they can see who in your user base, the people that are following you, which ones are able to spread a message the furthest? And they throttle you. They basically cut them off. They say, you've got 100 followers, and 10 of them are able to get you a shit ton of retweets. 10 of them are able to spread your message far and wide. Maybe they have a large follower base. Maybe they're just somebody who a lot of people pay attention to. They make it so those 10 people can't see what you say. Maybe they make it so the tweet is unavailable. You remember this infamous shit that's everywhere on this goddamn website? I love this. I love this little message. This tweet is unavailable. You know what? That tweet is available. You'd think. You'd think it was deleted. Or the account was deleted. Because we're peanut-eating fucking monkeys that have been told to sit in the corner. We don't actually click it. But surprisingly, more often than not, that tweet is completely fucking available. They've just made it so it's difficult to see. They want you to do a little bit more effort. And because we're lazy fucks, we don't do that effort. We just assume that the account's been deleted. Or the information is gone. How many of you have seen this? How many of you encountered this when you've quoted your own tweet or responded to somebody who's responded to you and you follow them or they follow you and for some reason that tweet is unavailable when it is clear as day if you go to their timeline? That is part of throttling. Another way to easily tell this is happening to you is if you say, I don't know, have these kind of impressions and then have these kind of impressions. A little bit of a fucking drop-off, I'd say. Just a tiny bit of a fucking drop-off going on there. And what makes this so ingenious is you still get people that say, I can see your tweets. They come on my timeline. It's a really great way of fucking with people. So in our hypothetical situation where you've got 100 followers and 10 of them are, are power users, they get your information out, well, those 10 have been blocked, but 90 haven't. And of those 90, the people will respond and say, I can still see your tweets. I can still see the information being put forward. Well, of course you can. Of course you can, because you're not those 10 people. You're not the people that actually get the information out. You're not the people that spread the information around. You're harmless. It's using analytical data. It's using the user information effectively to fuck with and silence people in a way that is not that obvious. You're not banning 
banning them, you're not shadow banning them. You're merely cutting off the power users in their follower base to make it so whatever they tweet out does not spread. Maybe they delay the timeline, maybe they make the tweet unavailable, but it gets stopped. Now, who do you think is doing this? Well, you could speculate. You could say it might be, I don't know, fat bull dykes with blue hair. You know, the penis-hating kind on the safety council. I don't know. That's just a guess. That's a hypothetical guess. But it seems to be a current trend. I mean, do you remember this shit? Yeah, that's, that's coming your way. Or how about good old Mark Zuckerberg? Mark, I'm going to throw Hawaiians off their land and build a fucking wall, Zuckerberg. You know, that's the face of a man who's seen Angela Merkel's pussy in person. That is the face of fucking despair. Now, you might be inclined to say, wait a minute. I don't buy this. Why would a social media site fuck with its users? Sure, maybe I've seen this on Reddit, but it's not like it happens anywhere else. It happens everywhere else. On Facebook, they cut out what they deem to be fake news because they don't want that information spreading. And if you're the person posting it, your post is the one that doesn't go anywhere. Maybe they delete it. Maybe they ban your account. Maybe they fucking put you in timeout. I don't know how good old Marky does it. I'm not a big Facebook user. But I do know that they target things they don't like and declare it fake news and make sure you can't spread it. That's, that's something he's openly talked about. Or how about this dumb shit, the little bell? Oh, what's that? You've subscribed to somebody? Better hit the little bell if you want to watch their fucking video. We want to make sure you extra committed to this. It's a way of delaying information. It's a way of silencing certain people. It's a way of fucking with the metrics. And it is everywhere in social media these days. Some sites are open about it. Some aren't open about it. When it comes to Twitter, though, I'm fairly fucking certain they're throttling people. If you watch this, if you talk to people who you follow or who follow you, more than likely you're going to encounter one or two who would say, yep, this has happened to me. The tweets are an available thing, the drop in impressions. I'll go from having multiple conversations and then there's just, it's just dead. It's like I have nobody who follows me. It's like they've never heard of me before. It's like I've been utterly shadow banned. No, you've been throttled. And what does that do? Exactly. Well, it makes you feel like you're talking to yourself. It's a great way to stop a conversation. It's a great way to stop talking about a certain subject. It pretty much guarantees that you think, well, nobody who follows me, nobody who knows me must be interested in this. I guess I'll shut up about it. And then in five to ten hours, maybe a day or two, depending on how pissed off Jack and his blue-haired dykes are, your, your account suddenly works again. But by that point, you're not talking about it anymore. And all those tweets that were delayed are now on the timeline, squished all the way at the fucking bottom. It's days old news. Nobody wants to talk about it anymore. That's what makes it so goddamn ingenious. Rather than ban you or prohibit you from speaking about something, rather than censoring you, they make you censor yourself by making you think nobody gives a shit.